Hello, welcome back. In this second half, we are going to go over how to compute the net present value for this project. In addition to that, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up a uh, data table from scratch. So instead of giving you the pre set up um, format, um, you'll get a chance to create one uh, from scratch on your own. The assumptions for this um, setup is relatively simple. Um, first, we are using cash flow that we computed in Chapter 8. When we create the performer uh, financial statements, that's where we did a lot of the cash flow forecasting. So re remember that as we your tools are accumulated from chapter to chapter. So as you work on the cases, you will need to include things that you learn from prior chapters. Uh, and of course, when you go out to work, you will need to use everything that you learn from your entire degree uh, here uh, in order to get your analysis done at work. So we are building it up step by step. Uh, so from the last chapter, we have the initial startup costs, um, as well as the net cash flow from operation. Uh, here, notice that we are not including cash flow from investment because cash flow from investment is included in the initial cost. Since we're going to use the weighted average cost of capital as our discount rate, we will add back interest expense to get cash flow from operation. Um, if we are using the cost of equity, then we will use cash flow to equity holders. So here we are using cash flow to the firm, which includes um, cash flow from operation, additional investments in fixed assets, as well as interest expense. In addition to that, um, we have another assumption that we need to make, and that is since this business does not have a plan and day, we'll have to use a terminal value. So we have to make an assumption about the long-term growth rate beyond the estimation period. In the, the Tasty Taco case, we estimated uh, cash flow for the next three years. That is the, the uh, estimation horizon we did for the performance statements. So we have to assume a long-term growth rate beyond year three. Lastly, we are looking ahead to our scenario analysis. We think that we may want to look at um, a best case, worst case scenario or multiple scenarios. So again, you can do more than two. Um, in this case, then we want to see we want to see what the impact on our um, net present value or the value of this project would be if our cash flow forecast is off. So we'll see how we can incorporate this in our model. First, let's compute the cash flow. So it is relatively straightforward. This is the sum of the two year, uh, the sum of the cash flow from operation and also interest expense. However, we remember we want to be able to make an adjustment. So we need to include, uh, put that in a bracket and then that will allow us to apply this adjustment. So we'll, uh, the adjustment is basically a percentage. We can be 0% um, zero, zero means we're using our original forecast. If you put 10%, that means we assume cash flow is 10% higher than our original forecast. If we put down minus 10%, that means we assume cash flow is 10% less than our original forecast. And we can copy that over to the next three years. So let's take, give this a try. So let's say what happened if we put in 10%. If you put in 10%, Notice that your cash flow is higher. If we put in minus 10%, then your cash flow will be lower. 0% is your base case. Uh, our initial investment is the $338,925. So the reason we do not, um, and we should make that a cash outflow because that is our, um, we spend this much. And then finally, we have our terminal value. Uh, this is a formula that you have from the textbook. If you don't have it memorized, uh, this is a growing perpetuity formula. Uh, it's equal to the cash flow from next year. So 
this is a terminal value in year three. So again, if you don't have the formula handy, you may want to write this down so that you know where it comes from. So anything that is unusual for you, if you cannot re recreate that from memory, you want to document that. Um, so you may want to put a note or a hint. Um, for a lot of you, um, this may be something that you have done before. So terminal in year, terminal value in year three is equal to cash flow in year four. Now we don't have cash flow in year four, so what do we do? We'll take cash flow in year three times one plus the growth rate. That will give us cash flow in year four divided by the required return minus the growth rate. Again, by now, I expect uh, most of you are very comfortable with this. Once again, if you don't have it memorized, make sure that you put a note in your in your model. You want to document your model so that you can come back six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, and still know what you did in a particular model. All right. So here we go. We take cash flow in year three times one plus the long term growth rate. And we need to divide that by the required return, which is the weighted average cost of capital, minus the growth rate. So that's our um, cash flow for our terminal value as of year three. The total cash flow is simply the sum of all the cash flows. And once we have all the cash flow forecasts, we can compute the um, criteria. The criteria for capital budgeting is the easiest, um, is the different um, criteria that we talk about. You can include net present value, you can include profitability index, you can include payback, you can include internal, um, internal rate of return. Now we're going to use Excel's financial functions to help us uh, compute this uh, capital budgeting criteria. The net present value, there is a MPV function in Excel. And the interest rate is our discount rate, which is the weighted average cost of capital. Next is the cash flow. And this is an important assumption in Excel. Excel assumes that the first cash flow that you put in here starts in year one. So we cannot include cash flow in year zero inside the MPV function. So this has to start with cash flow in year one. We definitely want to include cash flow in year zero. We have to add that back in after the function. So we have the MPV function computing the net present value for future cash flow, and then we add back cash flow in year zero. That's our uh, net present value. Excel also have an internal rate of return. And notice that when you look at use the IRR function, it just says values. It did not say value one. So it actually start includes cash flow starting in year zero. So this can be a bit confusing if you are not used to Excel. So just remember MPV start in one, IRR includes year zero. Uh, next. This is useful to compute the net present value of future cash flow. In fact, we did that once already um, when we compute net present value. So you can do one of two things. You can actually compute this first, and then you can just uh, make your net present value equal to the present value of future cash flow plus the initial cost. And that will give you the net present value as well. The profitability index is equal to the present value future cash flow divided by the initial investment, but in a positive number. So we have the initial set, uh, startup cost as well. That should not be formatted as a percent. So we will make that into a uh, number. So that is our profitability index. Once your basic model is complete, we can then focus on analysis. This is really the most important part and the real reason why you create your model. Creating mo the model is the easy step. The most challenging step is actually getting the input variable. We spend a lot of time creating the performer uh, financial statements that allow us to estimate future cash flows. But we know that these cash flows are not precise. Uh, in fact, most likely the future outcome will not be what we predicted. So we want to perform sensitivity or, sen or scenario analysis. And the analysis is the most important part. 
to create these uh, sensitivity analysis, we're going to use data table. The way that I like to structure my model is to create each module of my model in a diagonal way. What that means is I do not want to overlap any columns or rows with each section of my model. So this is my this is the model area. I computed the um, capital budgeting criteria of net present value, IRR, and profitability index. So I want to be my new model. The next section when I where I'm going to do the analysis, I want it to be below and to the right of the model that I already created. The reason for that is if I make any mistakes in this new section of my model, I can add row, I can add uh, columns, I can sub I can subtract rows, and I can subtract columns without affecting my original model. If I put my analysis here and I realize that I want an additional row, I will end up messing the original model and you do not want to do that. So let's go over here. So there's no overlap in column and there's no overlap in rows. This is a clean place for me to do the analysis and you can give it any name you want. Uh, we are analyzing our cash flow forecast. So this is analysis. Um, and we want to see what is the sensitivity to cash flow forecast. Okay, so we have this factor. We know that our cash flow forecast can be over or under. So we can say maybe our cash flow forecast can be as far off as minus 30%. Um, you can have it increment by any amount you want. I'm going to increase it by. 10%. Uh, so let's say we look at a range of cash flow forecast where it can be um, as high as um, as far off as minus 30% and as high off as 30%. Again, it doesn't have to be symmetric. You can go finer. You can say, I want to see what happened if my cash flow forecast is off by 5%. Um, and the worst case could be as bad as 30%, and the best case may be 15% over. Again, any amount is, is acceptable. This is up to you how you want to do your sensitivity analysis. We're going to do a one input data table here, and then next I'm going to show you a two input data table. In this one input data table, you, your input variable is only um, you can only have one factor. So this factor is your cash flows um, scenario adjustment. So this is so this is this factor, always label it, is your cash flow adjustment factor. Now you can make this pretty and this is not important, but some of some of you really like to be able to um, and notice that I'm still not overlapping into my model. Uh, to make this look good, you can do that. You can but you can make this um, sideways by merging your cell, and then you can also change, um, rotate. Here we go. You can rotate your your um, text. Again, this is just uh, a bonus tip. For those of you who are interested, most important is in setting up your analysis. So you want to this, you want to, so let's say I want to add another row here. There we go. I can just add one. Um, what do I want to the, to analyze the sensitivity to? Well, it seems to make sense to um, to take into account how does it impact present value or future cash flow. Uh, how does it impact net present value? How does it impact internal rate of return? How does it impact for profitability index? And we already, and this should, so any of this should come from your model. So we already computed this in our model. So all we have to do is just reference what we have computed. So now we have our basic mod, uh, data table set up. Okay. So this is a single input data table. 
in a single input data table, the first column of row, it can go either way. In this case, I put it in a column, is the factor that you allow to change. And then you can have as many in, um, criteria or decision variable as you want across um, as different columns. To create the data table, you first highlight the table area. And notice that the table area does not include the labels. It start with an empty columns, uh, corner cell and include the column of input data and the formulas that contain the output data. Next, we go to data, what if analysis, and data table. And once again, our sensitive our, 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 our variable, our input variable is arranged in a, in a column. So we go to column input cell. We scroll up to our assumption area. The column input cell is the cash flow adjustment factor. So that is located in cell B12 in our model. That's all there is. Press OK and Excel will complete the table for you. Take your time to format this. In fact, you already have this formatted. Um, all you have to do is highlight, go to home. This is a format painter. So you can highlight the, you can copy down the format. So that takes a lot less time in formatting your output. So here you can see, and as expected, uh, if your cash flow forecast is below your expectation, um, you'll have a lower net present value, a lower internal rate of return. Um, and this part is your base case. So you may want to include that, but you cannot include that before you do the um, data table analysis. So you can add this later after the fact. So you have, uh, so that gives you a base case, which is zero in our, in our case. You can always double check that is indeed the case. So you will get, uh, this is one way to do uh, sensitivity analysis. Next, we're gonna look at how to create a two input data table. Let us create a new diagonal. What that means is I'm gonna go over to a new column and under a new row. Um, to create a two input data table, it has different limitations. It, when, when you create two input data table, you can only analyze one single output variable. So here uh, in a one input data table, you can only have one input, but you can have multiple output. If you want to look at a two input data table, then you can only have one output. Uh, you have to choose one of the criteria to analyze as your output. I'm going to uh, pick uh, net present value. So let's look at the input, uh, the impact on net present value. Uh, we can look at, once again, um, uh, cash flow adjustment factor, for example, as one of our input because that is an important um, variable. And you can look at different percentage. So again, I'm going to just pick a few um, to start. So let's say negative 30%, um, negative 20%. Um, going to be easy here. So the, again, the, um, you will have a better idea if you are using a case study for, uh, to know what um, what sensitivity level do you want it, um, to analyze, what are reasonable, and what are um, uh, what is important. Another factor that may be important is, for example, um, the growth rate, the long-term growth rate. The, in the base case, we look at the long-term growth rate as 3%. So maybe the long-term growth rate is 0%, or maybe it's 1%, maybe it's 2%. So the idea is you can have two input variables. Now, one thing that is very important is that whatever input variable you use must come from the assumption area, and this, and it also must not be a computed value. It has to be a number. And in the corner, 
So you, across, across the top, here is your row of a of one of the input variable and here's the column of your input variable in the corner is where you reference the calculation of the output variable so our output variable is net present value so we'll say equal and we'll reference the calculation for net present value from our model now we have created we have to set up the data table we can go ahead and ask Excel to do the analysis. So first we highlight the table. The, again, the table does not include the label. It only includes the values. Let's go to data and what if analysis, data table. Our row input, you have to remember this. So our row input is the cash flow adjustment. Our column, our column is long-term growth rate. So let's go back to the assumption area. So remember, row is cash flow adjustment, column is long-term growth rate. If you don't remember this, you may want to write this down so that you will, um, you will not be confused when you went to input this in your uh, data table input. Once you have selected the uh, corresponding row input cells and column input cells from the assumption area, you can press OK. And Excel will complete, uh, complete this for you. So you can format this. And notice that the cash flow adjustment factor has a huge impact on your net present value, uh, as does the growth rate. But you can see that um, the growth rate, a higher growth rate is not sufficient to counter uh, a lower adjustment. So again, always look for your base case. Your base case is 0% and 3%. So here's your base case. It's the same as your, your, uh, your model calculation. So you know everything is input correctly. So this table gives you better insight on what is more important. So here, your cash flow uh, forecast is more important um, than the growth rate. In fact, if your growth rate is better than expected, um, but your cash flow adjustment factor is um, off, say by 10%, that's not sufficient to compensate for it. Uh, whereas uh, in the other case, if your um, cash flow forecast is better than expected, then even if your long-term growth rate is worse than expected, um, it actually outweighs that. So between these two variables, we know that um, sensitivity to cash flow is greater than sensitivity to growth rate. This concludes the, uh, the modeling for uh, chapter nine and good luck.